President Ruto was recently in Tanzania for an East Africa Community Ordinary Climate Summit. I wonder why they call it ordinary, but such is the way they named it. Now, this summit got me wondering, if we keep mismanaging the planet, how can climate change lead to the demise of the planet at large? Can it really bring human beings to the brink of extinction? That's what I want us to talk about in this video. But before we do that, if you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button. You're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really really need to subscribe to. Now the level of climate change we will see in our lifetimes depends on how quickly we cut emissions of dangerous greenhouse gases. But the shocking thing is that even if we were to stop all carbon emissions today, we would not be able to prevent some changes from happening. Although the sooner we cut these emissions, the smaller those changes will be. So it does make a difference. Now looking at the records, they show that the average global temperatures have risen by more than 1 degree Celsius since the 1850s with 2015, 2016, 2017, 18, 19 and 2020 being the hottest years ever recorded in history. These figures show us that the planet has been warming since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. And this is very dangerous. A warming planet leads to many other changes in our climate because as the planet warms, heat waves become more and more likely. In fact, over the past few years, heat waves have become the deadliest global weather hazard. And for those who are not familiar with a heat wave, a heat wave is technically a period of abnormally hot weather lasting for more than two days. And heat waves can occur with or without high humidity and they have potential to cover a large area, thus exposing a vast number of people to hazardous heat. So how exactly does it kill human beings? it kills them through dehydration. Scientists say the high heat puts strain on the heart and causes rapid dehydration. Dehydration which eventually leads to death if your body cannot cool itself down fast enough under what we call a heat stroke. Not to forget, our oceans absorb 90% of the extra heat generated by all human influence. So what happens is, when water heats up, it expands to take up more volume, and in so doing, they expand, causing the sea levels to rise. And in conjunction to that, we also have extra water flowing into the ocean from melting ice sheets and glaciers. Literally between 1901 and 2018, the global average sea level has risen by around 20 centimeters. Have a look now at Mombasa and other coastal towns. They are literally getting submerged in water, yet there is no tsunami. Here's the tape of just the recent uh, floodings in the coastal region. So here we are, yeah, trying to rescue ourselves after calling out guys of Ndudi and the neighbors and shouting to our neighbors to just leave because I called in the rescue department, asked for help, called in the fire department, asked for help, and all of them just kept telling me that they have to go through the county to get Sidri permission for them to be rescued. As in, I am so pissed off, like so fucking pissed off. As in, how do you get permission to rescue people out of something like this? Luckily, what's happening with Mombasa? As in, what is happening? Eh? This house has had a toddler, Kutoka Monin. He was just sitting there, asking for help. We've had like to shout for people to just leave the house. Soon the coast could become a tourist attraction for scuba divers. I hope it doesn't happen, but if the heat keeps rising and the water does too, we are likely to lose more land in the coastline in due time. Because things are truly bad. In fact, worse than most people realize. The ice in the Arctic is melting quickly. It is already 65% thinner than it was in 1975. In late summer, the Arctic sea ice area will be the smallest it has ever been in at least a thousand years. So if we do not reduce carbon emissions soon, we could see ice-free summers in the Arctic by the middle of this century. So we are talking about 2050 to 2060 thereabout. Again, marine life is also affected by all these changes. How so, you might wonder. Oceans absorb around 25% of carbon dioxide that humans release into the air. This then causes the oceans to become less alkaline, a process called ocean acidification. Now, ocean acidification is bad because it can have negative effects on marine organisms like coral and plankton, which are important parts of the food chain. They feed crabs and whatnot. Even farmers are not being spared from this impeding disaster. As our 
our climate warms up and rainfall patterns change, it may soon become harder to grow enough food in certain areas. The climate will change which crops can grow in different regions, and some places may be able to grow new crops, but many regions will experience reduced crop production, especially in hotter countries, of which Kenya is one of them. Colder countries will be the big beneficiaries of this because they are likely to see higher yields because there will be longer growing seasons and higher carbon dioxide concentrations. However, those short-lived celebrations will not last if warming continues in the long term. I mean, no one can survive this. It's affecting everybody. Even access to food will be disrupted because it will impact transport systems from farms to shops. And this ultimately will affect vulnerable people like we're already seeing in Kenya. There are regions where I've seen people are trying to deliver goods food, food products. And because the roads are blocked by waterways and whatnot, it ends up going bad. And the people on the other side, they end up dying of starvation. So global warming is a serious problem. We're already seeing it in the coastline. People are submerged in water. And we are paying a price for things which we are not even involved in. Industrialization really took a foothold in, in uh, US and you go to China, India. But Africa, really, what do we produce? We are mostly consumers. But we are also now consuming the effects of climate change, which we rarely even contribute to. But such is the way things are. We let me know in the comment section below guys do you think global warming is a serious threat or are we blowing things out of proportion i'll do my best to read your comments and to give you a response now in the event you're here for the first time please go on and hit the subscribe button and if you're watching from a different platform just head on over to youtube search for david wafula hit the subscribe button you're gonna be getting a ton of content of this nature if politics is something you're passionate about this is definitely the one channel that you really really need to subscribe to all right guys adios Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adios.